North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper. Obviously, North Carolina still in the throes and just devastation from Hurricane Helene and the complete and total lack of response from our government. Amazing response from private citizens. God bless all of you. But but poor response here. And one of the things that a lot of people suspected with this, like in Lahaina, was, hmm, this seems nefarious. And even if how it happened or why it happened is not nefarious, could be, not going to go there right now, what happens in the aftermath is, is where things usually open up. And a lot of people suggested with both these, these tragedies – that things would not be rebuilt the way they were because the government has different ideas for it. Well, listen to what Roy Cooper has to say. Governor Roy Cooper has to say about some of the areas that were just wiped out from Hurricane Helene. Sure, you know, North Carolina had two 500-year storms within 20 months of each other in the same place. Mm -hmm. We just had a 1,000-year storm event in southeastern North Carolina, a thousand years. We know that that's not true anymore. We know that these events are going to become more and more intense. So we've spent a lot of time being smart about the way we approach rebuilding. We, we, We go into communities, we work with them, we have plans for local governments. You know, in some areas, you just shouldn't build back. Mm -hmm. And we've been able to convince certain communities and people that buyouts are better and you create green space that soaks up flood water that comes and protects surrounding areas when you do build back you have to invest more in order for property to be more resilient but when it is elevated we even saw in some of the storms subsequent that those properties were unaffected because we had we had made them more resilient. So those are the the challenges that we're facing every day. And it's one of the reasons why we've been able to get a number of Republican local officials, particularly on the coast, who said, okay, guys, climate change is here. Uh, We know that we have to do something about it. We know that the United States is the leader in the world, needs to set an example. North Carolina needs to set an example. And so we've gotten a number of them on board. There's still a lot of climate denialists out there. <laughs> what a good little World Economic fo- fo- Forum soldier he is, huh? <laughs> I mean, just toe in the party line of what they want, what they've been prescribing and, and stating they're going to do for a long time. And it's weird to me. I mean, why does it always seem like male Democrat governors sound like deeply closeted gay men when they speak? Because Roy Cooper fits that bill, too. Yeah, he's definitely in the in the whole Tim Walls category. Category, yeah. But uh, <clears throat> you know what? We we talked about this when it was going on. Whether it's the lithium deposits that Black uh, uh, BlackRock wants to get to, or or push people into urban areas that we talked about with the World Economic Forum. It, it, either way, he said it out loud, and they, you know, when the storm was happening, and it's like, oh, we're gonna, it's get, we're gonna build back, and people will be able to return to their homes. No, they're not. That was the whole idea behind this. It was the whole idea to have this you know, thousand year flood that hits people who don't have any flood insurance because they won't be able to build back. And it actually him talking about building back what it you know, it's the whole build back better. Every globalist who's running for office right now is using that, except for Carmelo. She's using what new way forward or whatever, right. whatever the propaganda is. But and he talks about, you know, how when a disaster happens and you're going to rebuild, you have to get with the communities who decide that there might be new standards. We talked about this when the flood happened and when the hurricane Milton came through. That's what FEMA does now. FEMA works with these communities to say, all right, here are the new standards. They're all going to be nice and green. And if you don't comply with them, well, we're going to take your land. Yeah. I love the line, sometimes a buyout's better. No, (laughs) no, those people, for some people, maybe. But, But one, you're offering a buyout for nefarious reasons, not to help people. It's it's very it's very manipulative and malicious in nature, but it's not better. These people want their homes back. They want their their towns, their communities back. They want their churches back, their coffee shops back. They want their way of life back. And our government, leave it to them because this is what they do now. 
Well, that's just not going to happen. If you do, it's going to be cost prohibitive. We're going to make it miserable because we want what's here. And also this whole climate change thing. It could be a number of reasons why they're doing what they're doing. But you see in the end, I mean, we, we talked about this going back to the Lahaina thing. You see in the end, and we'll continue to see in the end, what people's real intentions are. Because in both cases, you're not going to see the communities built back the way they were. You're going to see a very different interpretation of what those areas could be. And it's not going to be the interpretation of the people. It's going to be what what these so-called elites have in, have in mind for it.